the extraordinary relative success that we have had in controlling the world of nature with the power of thought. But I don't know if it's ever struck you that we really don't know whether we have successfully controlled it or not. Uh, it could be argued, a very strong case could be made, that the entire intellectual venture of civilization has been a ghastly mistake. And that we are now on a collision course. And that all the vaunted benefits of intelligence, technology, and all that is simply going to draw the human race to an extremely swift conclusion. Of course, that might not be a bad thing. I've sometimes speculated on the idea that all stars have been created out of planets. And that these planets developed high civilizations, which eventually understood the secrets of nuclear energy and naturally blew themselves up. <laughs> and in the process, these stars flung out lumps of rock as they blew up, which eventually spun around them and became planets <laughs> all over again. And that this is the actual uh, method of genesis of the universe, uh, which would accord, of course, with the Hindu cosmology, where it is, uh, where time and the events in time are invariably looked upon as a process of progressive deterioration through the cycles of each cowper in which things get worse and worse as time goes on until it can't stand itself anymore and it blows up and after a period of rest and recuperation begins all over again. Why do we somehow have a distaste for a theory of time which runs in that direction? I mean, would you rather have a rhythm that goes or the one that goes See, I mean, which is it? <laughs> uh, or do you, you, you want one that's going up always? You see? Or always getting better. You, you, can't, uh, you can't even imagine such a state of affairs. Because, um, you know, it's relative. As you succeed in life, you simply... Uh, well, there was a communist, um, a Russian, not a communist, a Russian philosopher who accused the communists in their various five-year plans and progressive notions, wherein people were always preparing for tomorrow, of converting all human beings into caryatids. Now, you know, a caryatid is a pillar shaped in a human form which supports uh, a roof. And he said, you are turning all men into caryatids to support a stage upon which others will dance. But of course, uh, you know they never will. You have one row of caryatids supporting a floor, and very soon your children are the next row of caryatids supporting another floor, uh, so that it gets higher and higher, and, but we don't really know where we began, and we're always in the same place, always hoping, always thinking that uh, the, the next time will be it. And this, of course, is a, an eternal illusion. It's much better. Actually, one would be much happier to think that there is, the future is simply uh, deteriorating. I can explain that very simply. Human beings uh, are largely engaged in wasting enormous amounts of psychic energy in attempting to do things that are quite impossible. You know, as the proverb says, you can't lift yourself up by your own bootstraps. But recently, I've heard a lot of references in just general reading and listening, where people say, we've got to lift ourselves up by our own bootstraps. And you can't. And you can struggle and tug and pull till you're blue in the face, and nothing happens except that you exhaust it yourself. All sensible people, therefore, begin in life with two fundamental presuppositions. 
You are not going to improve the world and you are not going to improve yourself. You are just what you are. And uh, once you have accepted that situation, you have an enormous amount of energy available to do things that can be done. And everybody else looking at you from an external point of view will say, my God, how much so-and-so has improved. <laughs> but I know, I, I mean, hundreds of my friends are, are at work on enterprises to improve themselves by one religion or another, one therapy or another, they, this system, that system, and I'm desperately trying to free people from this. And I suppose that makes me a messiah of some kind. But the thing is that you, you, uh, <laughs> you can't do it. For one very simple reason, uh, which I think most of you are by now familiar with, is that the part of you which is supposed to improve you is exactly the same as that part of you which needs to be improved. <laughs> In other words, there isn't any real distinction between bad me and good I between the higher self, which is spiritual, and the lower self, which is animal. It's all of a piece. You are this organism, this integrated, fascinating energy pattern. And uh, as Archimedes said, um, give me a fulcrum and I will move the earth. But there isn't one. <laughs> it's like, you know, betting on the future of the human race. Uh, if I were really smart, I would lay a bet that the human race will destroy itself because in practical politics, one realizes that nothing is going to work out right. No candidate I've ever voted for ever won the election. So, uh, but the trouble is, there's nowhere to place the bet. And so, since I can't place the bet anywhere, I'm involved in the world and uh, must perforce uh, try to see that it doesn't blow itself to pieces. But the, the thing, I once had a terrible argument with Margaret Mead. She was holding forth one evening on the absolute horror of the atomic bomb and how everybody should immediately spring into action and abolish it. But she was so, uh, she was getting so uh, furious about it that I said to her, you know, you scare me because I think you're the kind of person who will push the button." Uh, in order to get rid of the other people who were going to push it first. <laughs> and she told me that I had no love for the, my future generations, uh, no responsibility for my children, that I was a phony swami who believed in retreating from facts. But I maintained my position. Robert Oppenheimer, a little while before he died, said that it's perfectly obvious that the whole world is going to hell. The only possible chance that it might not is that we do not attempt to prevent it from doing so. Because <laughs> you see, yeah, all the troubles going on in the, on in the world now are being supervised by people with very good intentions. Uh, their, their attempts to, to keep things in order, to clean things up. Uh, to forbid this and prevent that possible uh, horrendous damage. And the more we try, you see, to put everything to rights, the more we make fantastic movies. And it gets worse. And maybe that's the way it's got to be. Maybe I shouldn't say anything at all about the folly of trying to put things to right. But simply on the principle of Blake, let the fool persist in his folly so that he will become wise. It is my observation from my short, humble life, we all get to die. Those though, who are upright, who are honest, who are good, get to die that wee bit sooner.